Hi there friends, welcome to Clear Day. My name is Desiree and today we're going to be discussing famous sculptures found all around the world. So let's get started. So starting here with our first sculpture, it's called a magic tap. It was built by French sculptor Philippe Fell. He's created a mind-bending architectural sculpture in the form of his magically floating tap. It's situated in the ancient southwestern Spanish city of Cadiz. The simple composition is of a giant bronze tap, one which gushes forth water as if by magic. The sculpture is unique in that it appears to be floating, but it's actually supported by a pipe hidden in the flow of endless water. The artist Philippe Phil produced bronze sculptures, but above all, made resin his material of choice. He has been commissioned for around 60 monumental works of art. Our next sculpture. So this is called the Apennine Colossus. It was built by Giambologna in, in Florence, in Italy. So this impressive half man, half mountain was created in 1597 by the Italian sculptor Giambologna. It stands over 10 meters tall and is a personification of the Apennine mountain range. The statue also conceals a special secret. There are rooms and caves built inside of him. Moving on to our next sculpture. So this one is called The Force of Nature. It was built by Lozano Quinn in Katara, Qatar. This powerful sculpture made from bronze, stainless steel, and aluminum shows Mother Nature swinging planet Earth around in circles. Quinn says he created this sculpture to remind us of the destructive power of nature and the false sense of security we have towards it. After having seen the ravaged coast of Thailand uh, by the hurricane that affected the Southern states, he decided to create a sculpture dedicated to mother nature. All right, our next sculpture. So this is called Diminish and Ascend. It's by David McCracken in Bondi, Australia. So built for the event known as Sculpture by the Sea, this incredible piece from certain angles looks like a never ending staircase. McCracken's wonderful way of playing with perspectives creates the optical illusion of an actual stairway to heaven. All right, our next sculpture. It's titled Incomplete or Not All There. Also, Les Voyageurs, it's in French. <laughs> it's by Bruno Cantolano. It's also been uh, titled Travelers. Sculptor Bruno Cantolano's bronze figures are inhabiting the Vatican Lagoon, uh, Venetian Lagoon his travelers or less voyagers are fractured and fragmented individuals each on its own path. These incomplete figures are connected in concept, but unique in their journey. Cantilano's travelers are in some ways a reflection of his own life. Born in Morocco, he and his family were forced into exile in the Marseilles in the mid 1970s to move, which occurred when he was a teenager, it left a lasting impression and shaped his future. After years of working in different professions, he finally turned to sculpture at age 30. As an artist, his breakthrough came in 2005 when his sculpture was noticed by a Parisian gallerist. From there, Cantalano's technical prowess has developed alongside the intense psychology behind his art. His travelers are full yet empty, making the fundamental parts of what complete them. In this way, they're constantly seeking the pieces that they lack. 
by juxtapositioning the fragility of terracotta with the prominence of bronze, Cantolano is once again telling us that whatever seems solid can be overturned in an instant. A quote from the artist himself. In my work, I'm always looking for the movement and expression of feelings. I get out a form and wax inertia to give them life. Cantolano declared. Coming from Morocco myself, I carried these suitcases full of memories that I represent so often. They do not only contain images, but also experiences, desires, my roots in motion. Essentially, they're going to travel to rediscover themselves. All right, our next sculpture. This one's titled, Man Hanging Out. Man Hanging Out is a famous sculpture located in Prague. In this sculpture, 1996, Cerny depicts psychoanalysis Sigmund Freud suspended by one hand from a pole high above the ground. Freud was born in Freiburg, uh, now part of the Mor Moravian region of Czech Republic. Freud is credited with having completed his most creative work in his 40s when he was suffering from psychosomatic illnesses and a number of phobias. The artist created the piece in response to the question of what role the intellectual would play in the new millennium. As Freud was, in Cerny's words, the founder of psychoanalysis, the intellectual face of the 20th century. Like his other works, Man Hanging Out starts as a surprise to ordinary sensibilities, then uh, imitates the artist's frustration with the way things are or were and are the for those in tune with the message, insinuates the personal questioning of the status quo. Man Hanging Out is a fine example of the reason why Cerny is considered a leading sculptor and a pop culture icon. All right, moving on to our next sculpture. So this is called The Passer Through Walls, or in French, Le Passer Murray. Maria, there we go. <laughs> I'm not very good with my French. So this translates to the man who walked through walls, the walker through walls, or the man who could walk through walls. It's a short story published by Marcel Amy in 1941. This sculpture can be found in Paris. It's based upon a character written by Marcel Amy. The character realizes that he can walk through walls, so he begins a life of crime and adultery. But during his last escapade, the magic stops and he gets trapped inside of the wall. All right, our next sculpture. It's titled Face of Freedom. All right, it was created by Marco Sanfinelli. It was created to celebrate the 50th year anniversary of Nelson Mandela's imprisonment by our parthead police. There are 50 columns for each year. The shape and form of this sculpture are representative of the leader's 27 years behind bars. This sculpture is located in Halle, where the rest took place. In order to see the face of Nelson, of Nelson, the sculpture must be viewed from the right. All right, our next sculpture. It's titled Letting Go. This was created by Robin, or um, yeah, Robin Wright, a UK based artist. Robin Wright, uh, the UK based sculptor, works primarily with stainless steel wire. He has mastered the creation of enchanting and dynamic fairy tale or fairy like sculptures. They seem to dance in or struggle against the wind. Some are very small while others are very big. They are formed in dramatic poses and they are all holding dandelions, which are a part of nature and makes them appear magical. As his 
uh, signature, Wright also buries a stone heart at each of the fairy's core. Sometimes these hearts have engravings on them or messages. All right, our next sculpture. So this is titled the Great Depression Redline Statue, right? So this one can be found in New Jersey. The Great Depression breadline will make you appreciate modern times. That's because it's one of the hard, harshest depictions of the Great Depression era. The sculpture portrays five males waiting in line for food. The figures all have downcast eyes and long coats, serving as a reminder of the extreme conditions during one of the darker periods in American history. Well, that's all for today's famous sculptures all around the world. We'll see you next time.